Hi, in the last example we took a look at the quick start and went to the home page and had a quick exploration of the various options in the home page. Now let's go back there. So what I'm going to do is log back in again. And again we're going to go back to the getting started section. Now under the getting started section you'll see that we have two main sections of functionality. Uh, one is really just what we call feature spotlights, which is a set of uh, capabilities that we illustrate out of box that a developer would want to see for the first time with some basic information about how these things work. Um, and then the next section uh, in this page are more deep dive examples called application use cases. And these use cases show you how to uh, build certain types of application with full developer tutorials and downloadable source code. So let's take a look at the uh, f feature spotlights to start with. Uh, the first one shows you uh, the most uh, simple use case that a developer might be interested in, and that is to build a basic HTML page. Now, this HTML page illustrates some interesting details in that some of the text in the HTML page is dynamic, and the HTML page itself has got some uh, custom uh, style sheet as well. So in order to illustrate to a first-time developer how to build that, uh, we actually have links to our engineering team's blog site. And the blog uh, will actually have updates from our team that show you step by step how to build, for example, this style of application. Um, each of the uh, articles in this blog go into a lot of detail, uh, really to try to help you understand, for example, how to use the principles of Apache Sling to build your first web-based application. So let's go back and have a look at some of the other spotlights. The next spotlight uh, shows you how to build what we call a composite web application. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that running. So this application uses the composite application framework to use both HTML and a flex-based application in the same overall web application. And in this example we do something interesting. For example, I can watch for an update on a particular attribute. And you can see that we have basic communication between both the HTML-based part of the application and the Flex part of the application. Now again, whenever we go to the Spotlight article on our blog site, you can see that uh, we've gone into some detail helping you understand what that uh, sample does and how it works. So again, just like in the last example, uh, the Spotlight article goes into enough detail for a first-time developer to understand what is going on both uh, for the development of the HTML part of the application as well as uh, the perspective of the Flex developer. Um, so we try to provide you with uh, enough information to see how the uh, Spotlight worked um, so that you can get a feel for the initial capabilities of the platform that you may be more interested in. Another example of that is uh, a common use case in which we uh, need to build a web application that takes advantage of content in CRX. And so if I run this uh, spotlight, for example, then we'll see a simple example uh, web application where I can look at multiple different types of content. So for example, I can see uh, images, I can open up some I statements, and all of this is content that is being read from the CRX repository. Uh, I can look at other PDFs or maybe open up a, a Swift-based movie file. Um, now, this particular example is showing us not only how to navigate the content store, but how to use one of the out-of-box UX components that we provide to Flex developers called the Document Viewer. And you'll see that this Document Viewer is able to generically take care of displaying any type of content, for example, an I statement or an image. Um, so the spotlights are there to really just bring your attention to some of the uh, interesting capabilities of the platform that a developer for the first time might be interested in. There's also links on the right-hand side that will bring you into uh, other online content that we have. So as I mentioned earlier, there's another category of examples that we provide on the Getting Started page that really go into some more deep dive examples of how to build applications with the uh, Adobe Digital Enterprise platform. Um, these use case examples try to make use of multiple frameworks in the platform at the same time. Uh, so for example, if I look at uh, the first one called Data Integration, uh, this will show me how to use the composite application framework with our other frameworks to build a certain style of application. Uh, so I can use uh, messaging, which is a feature of data services, to 
implement an example uh, chat application, um, or I can, again within the context of a composite application, make use of web service invocation, for example, to get some data and display it in a grid. Uh, and again, I can show how different types of content can be displayed within a composite application. Now, for each of these examples, we provide a developer tutorial. And what's a little different than the Spotlight examples I showed you earlier is that the developer tutorials really go into detail on how to get the source code, how to get the Flex projects where necessary, and step by step what to do in order to recreate the same application in your own environment. And there's a developer tutorial for all of our use case examples that we have out of box. You'll see that this developer tutorial goes you through in it goes through in great detail how to create your project using Flash Builder. So the next example I'd like to uh, go through is one of our new frameworks in the platform called Standalone Task Management. Now, as with Lifecycle Enterprise Suite, it's possible to have assignment of tasks to users so that they can see some content, respond to it, and see a to-do list as part of a basic application. But what we've done with this framework is to give you the ability to have tasks that are managed purely within the CRX content repository. So I'm looking at some tasks here, for example, that again use the document viewer to show the attachment of the task, and also allow me to look at traditional tasks, which may be PDF-based. But in addition to that, to create uh, new tasks, and again have that information simply stored within the content repository. So this framework is, is new with the platform. It allows you to create what we call standalone tasks, very similar to what one might have done before with BPM workflow tasks in the enterprise suite. And there are details about how to integrate with BPM workflow tasks as well. So if I go back to the main page, You will see, of course, that there's another example for implementing the same application but using our document services with BPM process-based tasks. Now, another example out of box that I'd like to draw your attention to is model-driven development. But uh, with the new release of the enterprise platform, uh, we are able to use the CRX content repository as the persistent store for an application that is built using Flex model-driven development. So for those of you that may recall uh, model-driven development from previous releases, this is a framework that helps you build applications around structured data. So for example, here I have a set of companies, and if I click on each company in my data grid, you can see that the Flex application fetches the detailed information about that company to display. But uh, because this application was built using model-driven development, I can also create more instances of this type of entity, as it is called. So for example, let's try to create another company. And you can see that here is my company that I've just created. Now, similarly, of course, there are employees of companies. And the advantage of model-driven development is that the data model used to develop this application relates the concept of a, an employee to a company so that the application itself is able to dynamically display which employees work for which companies. And I could then go and add other employees for the company that I've just uh, created. This functionality is typically implemented over relational databases, but we've provided the same ability with the same framework to use CRX as your persistent storage as well as an option. Okay, so in summary, um, whenever you first start the Adobe Digital Enterprise platform, uh, you will see a very simple to navigate home page. Um, there are many other uh, facilities that you get immediately when you start the uh, platform quick start, and we'll go into these in future episodes. Don't forget that for a first-time developer, getting started provides you a set of feature spotlights that show you out-of-box some basic capabilities, some nice spotlight articles that uh, come directly from our own development team, and uh, more deep dive integration use cases with step-by-step -step developer tutorials to help you really get the most out of your initial download of the platform and quickly understand as a developer how to build applications. So with that, uh, we're finished with the first um, 
example of using uh, samples out of box and in our next episode we'll show you how to get even more samples.